In recent few years, especially post the Galwan incident, the government has been pushing and prioritizing the indigenization and procurement of all major arms, weapons and equipments. And now the government has come up with few major shopping lists for armed forces which will greatly boost their capabilities. The first one is for army and is related to AK-203 deal regarding which we had made several videos and we are not going to discuss further on that. The second major deal is related to the purchase of indigenous advanced light helicopters or ALH-3 for the Army Aviation Corps. As we all know that with the recent tension at LSE, the mobilization of troops has increased in the tough terrains of Ladakh. The aging fleets of Chetak and Cheetah is limiting the Indian Army's operational capabilities. The new orders of HLS LH-3 or Dhrup will greatly boost the Indian Army's operational capability and readiness. A total of 56 MK-1 and 20 MK-2 is already being operated by our Indian Armed Forces. HL Group MK-2 is similar to MK-1 except for the newer HL-IA glass cockpit. HL and Indian Navy has already signed a contract to deliver 16 ALH MK-3 and now Indian Army will procure 25 ALH MK-3 helicopters. The ALH-3 deal is going to worth Rs 3,800 crore. HS ALH is a world-class helicopter in 5.5 ton category. It is an all-weather, multi-role, multi-mission state-of-art helicopter. It comes up with an excellent maneuverability, user-friendly control, low vibration and noise level, high-speed, efficient lift, which makes it a superior among the contemporary helicopters. ALH has logged close to 3 million cumulative flight hours and has proven its merit in versatile operations. Talking about ALH MK3, it comes up with an improved Shakti 1H engines, new electronic warfare suite and warning systems, automatic chaff and flare dispensers and improved vibration control system. The new Shakti 1H engine has improved the high attitude performance and the helicopter can operate at an altitude over 6 km at ease. It can host 14 fully equipped troops. DGCA has even praised its crash-worthy design as few accidents have not caused any fatalities. These helicopters can also be armed. The HL MK4, which is also known as Dhruv WSI Weapon System Integrated or HL Rudra is an attack variant designed for Indian Army. HL Rudra has been armed with both anti-tank and anti-aircraft missiles and a 20mm turret-mounted cannon. The Dhruv WSI is also capable of conducting combat air support and anti-submarine warfare roles. Recently, DRD has also conducted a test of anti-tank carrier missile from Dhruv. It can host a 20mm cannon or a chin-mounted turret gun, can carry MBDM Mistral 1 short-range air to missile, 4 70mm Thales 12-round rocket pods, 4 into 2 Helena or Dhruvrast anti-tank guided missiles, the Coast Guard version has one 7.62mm carbine mounted machine gun and the naval version has two torpedoes or depth charges and four anti-ship missiles. The next two deals is going to be about 39 Russian club anti-ship missiles and the necessary equipments to go with it. This repeat order is worth Rs 1735 crore. There is also proposal regarding 10 naval ship-borne unmanned aerial system or simply drones for surveillance to protect major warships. Other small but important projects including software programs for training ordnance disposal systems and radios for ships. The last but not the least is going to be Inter Air Force Beast. Yes, it is for Su-30 MKI. The digital radar warning receiver developed by DRDO will be purchased for Inter Air Force Sukhoi 30 fleet. Rs. 1000 crore for about 125 DRWR118 will be approved in coming weeks to improve the avionics capability of the warplanes. The RAR warning receiver is a critical component of electronic warfare system in modern day fighter jets. It detects the radio emission of radar systems. Their primary purpose is to issue warning when a radar signal that might be a threat such as fighter jets fire control radar is detected. The warning can then be used manually or automatically to evade the detected threat. For example, a fighter aircraft on a combat patrol might notice enemy fighters on RWR and subsequently use its own radar set to find and eventually engage the enemy fighter. 
In addition, the RWR helps to identify and classify threats which blips on the radar console screen are dangerous. But since different fighter aircraft typically have different types of radar sets, once they turn them on and point them near the aircraft in question, it may be able to tell by the direction and the strength of signal which of the blips is of which type of fighter. The RWR can be an important tool for evading threats. If a surface to air missile system or enemy fighter aircraft has fired a missile at the aircraft, the RWR may be able to detect the change in the mode that radar must use to guide the missile and notify the pilot with much more insistent warning tones and flashing bracketed symbols on the RWR display. The pilot then can take evasive actions to break the missile, lock on or dodge the missile. The spectra or self-protection equipment to counter threats for Rafale aircraft in Rafale jets is an excellent example of modern-day electronic warfare suite. This system is what makes Rafale distinctly ahead of the fighter jets belonging to its generation. Su-30 MKI has been struggling with a powerful RWR system. Over the years, several radar receiver and electronic warfare systems such as Tempest and Tarang have been developed and inducted successfully by Indian Air Force. However, the performance was not satisfactory as the modern day RWR system. The next generation electronic warfare system needs next generation RWR which can be delivered by RWR118. This was today's update. Please let us know what is your views about these in comment section. Feel free to post your comments and suggestions about any topic related to defense sector on which you want to hear from us. With this, I would like to say goodbye and jai hind friends. Please like and subscribe our video if you have not done already. We will be soon back with more interesting and amazing development happening in defense sector.